to see everybody here. Thanks. <laughs> I was noticing, like, I have my, uh, I always talk about my rituals, and I think I have in life, and the same kind of ritual up here. Now you guys are going to think about it all the time, and I walk up, and I'm always taking a drink right there, so I switched it up a little and turned on my mic and then took a drink, so I don't know. that's, I've changed, progress, yeah, first step is admitting it. Um, <laughs> now, you know, I was thinking, I'm going to pray here, but uh, it, it's, it, so we look at everything that's going on, you know, I, I know, uh, you know, Tanya mentioned how just the world is just a mess, so many things going on, and I know there's still a lot of people uh, out and wondering about all this, and even still worried about, you know, coming to church and getting out and different things, and, and I just, I pray we do this as a church, so we always continue to reach out to people, I try to, I just admit, I'm not the greatest at it all the time, like all of us, let's keep each other 
uh, together. You know, we talk about us being a family. Let's do that. It's not just a family as we walk into this building like it should be everywhere as we go out in life and it's because people are still out there. We may be okay. We may come in here and think, well, you know, we're good or maybe there's different levels of fear or not fear or whatever even in here, but I know even outside there's going to be different levels there. So let's continue to, to reach out to everybody who's out there and just uh, just let them know that we, that we love them, that we care, that we're still there for them and, and just, just to know that God is still in control because it's, it's still a mess and so many things and it just feels like more and more things are just coming every single day. You know, so let, let's do that. Let, let's just remind ourselves to, to be there for each other and to love each other. And, and, and if we're going to call ourselves a family, let's, let's really, let's do that, you know, not just one day a week, an hour a week or whatever, but every single day we need that because uh, I'm, maybe I'm just putting you guys or putting myself out there with you guys to be accountable because I know I don't always do that. And it's, it's not intentional sometimes. It's just we got to make a, a conscious decision to do that for everybody. But I just want to put that out there. Let's pray. Let's open up and get started. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here today. Thank you for, for everybody here, God. You, you know what we're going through. You know the things that we're dealing with, God. Help us to just lay it at your feet and trust in you, God. No matter uh, what's going on, no matter what comes our way, God, I pray that you would just help us to, to lay everything at your feet and just to uh, and just see you, see that you're in control, God. Um, things are going to come at us. We know that, God. We're seeing it even in this world, God. But help us to to not be stirred in our, in our faith at all, God. I, I pray that this just draws us to you even more. So be with us all here, God. You know our hearts. You know uh, whether or not we believe in you or not here, God. So you know everything that's going on with us here, God. And so I pray that you'll just meet us right where we are, God. Give me the words to say, God. Just get me out of the way. I pray that I don't do this myself and, and help me to interpret this right, God. We want to hear from you, God. Not my opinions or not our thoughts, God. But we want to hear from you, the God of the universe. Come down here and I pray that you'll change us. Thank you that we can come in here and we have this freedom. We can sing to you and we know that you hear us, God. Change our hearts right now and just meet us here. We, we just, we just want to see you and to see you change our hearts. Thank you so much for everything you do for us, Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, I don't know if you've ever, you know, you make a statement when you're, you're confident in just something happening. You, know, the, like you, you, have, you have confidence in something. You have confidence you could go do something. You, you make those statements, but I don't know how you are whenever you really get tested on those things. You know, I, I think we talk big games on stuff. And I was thinking about this. If... Uh, if you ever went, I don't know if anybody's ever been bungee jumping. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Like, I, I, I wouldn't. I'm kind of the same as y'all. I'm beating nodding my head. I wouldn't do that. But it would be a whole lot easier to talk a big game, you know, at the very beginning. Be like, I could, I could bungee jump. I could just jump and, you know, you could bounce. Everything's fine. And then when you get to the top up there, when you're right on the edge and they're like, you got to go. There's all these people waiting and you're there. It's a whole lot different than a week or a month before that when you were talking about doing that. You know, as you're up there looking down, you're like, I wish I would have brought an extra underwear or something or, <laughs> or word depends or something, you know, like, so just, <laughs> that's just how you'd be thinking as you're up there. Uh, I, I, know, I know some of you guys, are, you talk about skydiving. I know you guys did that. And so I don't know if anybody's ever done any skydiving or anything there, but that would be the same thing with me. I, it just, it's hard enough to get me on a plane. You know, you, sometimes you got to pull a Mr. T on me and like, like knock me out put me up there is what I, is what I feel like you got to do. Like, I hate them, and, and I think we're going to crash every time. I can't imagine planning to go up in it and actually jump out on purpose. Like, I, I don't know, like, if you guys had a, something wrong with your heads or something. No, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. But, uh, but, but I, I, yeah, I would, it would think the same thing is that, for me, I know, and a lot of people, you would, you would talk like you could do this pretty easy, and then w when you get there, it's, it's a whole kind of different game there. Maybe, maybe even smaller things. It's like when your kids, that's my old bottle there. Man, I'm always causing trouble here. When your kids, it's about time for them to drive. You know, I know you guys you got one there. And it's like, you talk about it, like, yeah, I can, let her, I can let them drive. I said her, not just you, any kids. I let them drive, it would be fun. Um, but then when you get in there, I know, I don't know if how, you, how you guys are, but like you're over there pushing the, imag the imaginary passenger brake and it's not working, you know, you're gripping on everything and stop stop, you know, you're yelling. I, I know there's that type of fear that comes with that. I bring that up, and there's probably all kinds of illustrations. I bring that up because, like I mentioned a second ago there, we are in just a, just a wild time right now in this world. Our faith is, is being tested, and I think it's, it's going to continue to be tested, I think, in, in so many ways. And, and even if you take 2020 out, it's going to be that way. Our, our faith is going to be tested. I think even as you go further and further down the line, just in 
history, it's, it's going to be that way. And, and in fact, Jesus always said, your faith is, is going to be tested. People are going to hate you because of me. He warned us in a whole lot of ways like that. But I do see that right now that it's just being tested in a lot of ways. It, it's, it seems like, a, I've said before, like uh, just a movie of, of all the different things that just continue to happen right now. And so we can talk about having this faith in God. We can, we can talk about it. I, I'm with him no matter what. But really, the question is, I'm asking you, is like, how are you doing, though, with that? You know, we talk, we talk a big game. I'm not here to trash us on that. I just want us to think about our faith and think about this. But how are you actually doing in this and trusting in God when, when stuff starts to happen? Th- th- that's the difficult times. How are we doing? How are we trusting in him through these things? Like, it's, it's just changing before our very eyes in so many ways. We're waiting for all this stuff to happen. All, uh, to top it all off, you know, we, we have all these things, and now we have two hurricanes, you know, and, and maybe they're going different ways. We don't know all these different things. You know, it's never happened before. I hear that all the time. On the, when you hear the weatherman, it's just like, never happened before. This has never happened before, you know. It's like, now they're talking about aliens. It's like it's nothing. We're like, yeah, but there's, there's two hurricanes coming. You know, we just pass over that. Like, is this crazy? And all these things happening. And so I think about it like, how are you doing through all that testing in our, in our faith? We've been going through the book of Mark, and we're going to be in Mark chapter 4 today. I told you guys before, we're just going straight through this book because I did want to simplify. I just want us to look at Jesus and just follow through his ministry with these guys and how he just interacted with people, how he talked, what he did, the things that he did, what we can learn about him, what that means in our life, and what it means for us going through stuff like 2020 and all the stuff that's going to happen and maybe will happen later on, you know? So, so we're going to look at that, just simplifying it and looking at this. So in Mark chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 35. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. <laughs> Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Man, so so much going on in there. I feel like sometimes I I say this too much, and and I don't really, I don't want to apologize for it. I'm just saying that Jesus, I said it a minute ago, he said it's going to be difficult. Uh, Like, I I feel the need to always remind us of that. He said it's going to be difficult. And and, and not that, I, I hope I don't, like, I, I, I overemphasize that, like, w- with putting down the good stuff with Jesus. There's a lot of, there's a ton of benefits. I mean, there's just life in, in him and heaven. You know, we have eternal life, forgiveness of sins, you know, saved from hell. You know, we have all these massive things. But I always want to let us remember, as we're here, he did say it's going to be difficult. He said it's going to be hard. It's not going to be a cakewalk. People are going to be against you. And so he said that many times. And I just want us to know, I just want us to come into this prepared so that when stuff comes, we're ready. And so we come to this time when our faith is being tested. We know this is coming, and we're, we're prepared for this. We, we've, we, we read our scripture. We know this. We know he's there no matter what. Even when these things come, we're there with him. And that's what I want us to, to have is, is, is that, that type of faith and preparedness and, and readiness for all these things that are coming. So this storm came to these guys. It was this furious storm. It was, just, it was something that, that freaked them out to the point of they didn't know I could just imagine the thoughts in their mind. They didn't know maybe if, if they're going to see their family again, if they're going to see the shore again. Is this the end, you know, with them? These guys were fishermen. They did this. So it wasn't like they had never been out there. I don't think it was just like some minor storm out there. This is guys who did this for a living, and this big storm came, and they're, they're freaking out, and Jesus is asleep, you know, and they're like, how can he sleep through all this? I told you guys before, I won't go into it, but I, I know just a little while back I, I went on that deep sea fishing, which didn't go that great. And, and, and I remember, for me, like I, I told you guys we laughed about it, that I thought I was, was going to die, I thought it was, it was going to tip over and all this stuff. But I remember what I did is I looked at the workers that were walking around. They're just holding on to the side, you know, as they're, they're tipping a lot too. And we're just sitting there, I'm gripping on my seat, and he's walking around doing stuff, getting the boat ready and everything. And I did. I watched him. I was freaking out enough, but I watched those guys, and I was like, okay, if they start showing the, even half the type of fear that I'm having, even a quarter of it or whatever the fear that I have, 
then I'm going to give full reign to my, <laughs> my freaked outness, and I don't know what I'll do. I'll jump or something, you know, which would be stupid, but I'll just, I'll freak out. That's what I was doing as I was looking at those workers, and I was thinking, okay, what are, what are these guys going to do? Are they, are they freaking out? They seem calm. They seem normal through all this, and so that kind of kept me somewhat calm for a little while, thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance that we're not dying here, you know, and that was, that was it, and I think in a lot of ways that that's, that's how they were. They, they were looking at him. He's there asleep, and, and they're, they're confused on this. Like, what, what is he doing here? We all know that we're going to die, and he's down there taking a nap. Like, what is, what's wrong with Jesus here? There's two questions that I, I really kind of came to me as I was preparing for this this week. And here's the first one I'll say up here is, how could Jesus not care? That's what they were saying. That, that's the thoughts that were kind of going in their mind. How could Jesus not care about everything that, that's happening right now? Everything was coming to mind for them. They're thinking about all this stuff, their families and their jobs and their careers and their health and all this stuff. And they're like, how can he not? He's just down there taking a nap. And we're up here worrying about all this, and he has no concern for this right now. So we can talk about them, but, but let's even bring it into our day and time as, as we think about now. Because we can have the same questions about Jesus. Like, how could he not care about us? And we already said he named some of the things that are going on. I even wrote all this down, and, and as I wrote them down, I'm like, is this really happening this year? It's like, the fires... Uh, you know, like California's on fire. I think I read something that was like 10,000 lightning strikes caused all the fires out there in California and all around. It's like, it's pretty wild. Uh, COVID-19, fears, sickness and death, wars. Um, country in the world is at disunity, government corruption, racism. I, I, I hope I don't <laughs> just get everybody down now as I'm reading all this. Racism, riots and Antifa, pedophilia running rampant. Now you're wondering if you watch anything on TV. It's an election year, so you, got, you even got those horrible commercials where they're fighting it out, you know, now on top of all this. And now we got two hurricanes, you know, coming at us. But maybe it's swinging away from us. But, you know, I, I don't think we should just be like, okay, if it doesn't hit Texas, we're all right. Like, we should be praying for Louisiana. You know, I mean, there's, there's so much that's happening right now. And so we could have the same thoughts. How could Jesus not care about all this? That might be the thoughts that are running through our minds. Some people are asking that. Maybe we don't. Maybe we have it all down here. I, I, I have doubts or whatever. Like maybe we have it all down, but, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that don't have this down, and they're looking at this like, why doesn't he care? All this stuff is happening. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Is he really loving? Does he care about us? <clears throat> why would he allow all this stuff? And I tell us a lot of times, <clears throat> as you're reading the Bible, as, as you're coming into this, I, I really do, I want to push you guys to Scripture all the time because it's so easy to, to take a passage out of Scripture and, and not really understand what all that he's talking about. You know, you might have a couple of passages down in there, but put it all into, into perspective. Put it all into context so we can see, okay, what is God doing? And so we can even see how he's dealt with other people in different times and see this is how he is. And so what, what can we understand about how he can help us in this time? That's what we do. We look at Scripture and we see and he, we get comfort from him through all this. I even think about it. I don't have this up here, but... Even in James 1, 3, it just says the testing of our faith produces perseverance. So there's, there's things that he's doing even through trials and temptations and all this stuff. He says, I'm, I'm making you stronger. I'm making you, uh, I'm making you uh, willing to trust in me even more. Yeah, and I have that up on the screen. Look at, he may look uninvolved, but he's making us stronger. There's things that he's doing. If, if anything, I, I, I want to get you to understand that a little bit more. If you don't know this, if you're going through this, there's some things that, you know, you like in Scripture, but when you're hit hard with something, when we're hit hard with stuff that's going on right now, it, it just the worldwide things are happening right now, but I guarantee you, individually, we have all these other things on top of 2020 that are happening to us, and it makes us question these things. How can He really love us? How can He allow these things to happen there? And, and, and I want to encourage you with that. He may look uninvolved, but He's making us stronger. And, I, and I'm going to go to Scripture here, because I don't want to just throw that out as my as my opinions there, but look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Just a couple of verses in here. This is Paul just giving, giving a picture of what's happening with them, and, and we learn something really important here. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. Paul said, we don't want you to be uninformed. He's talking to the Corinthians there. He says, brothers and sisters, about troubles we experienced in the province of Asia, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Man, so much is said in there. 
so much is said in there. I've said this many times, you know. We say this sometimes in church, and it's, it, it's not true that God won't allow us to go through anything that's, that's too difficult for us, okay? Now, I, I want you to be comforted, but I just want you to understand this. Because so, when this happens, you're going you're gonna to be tempted to either turn away from God or think that he doesn't care about you or whatever. God does allow us to go through things that are too difficult for us. Not because he doesn't love us, but because, like Paul was saying there, he says that he wants us to rely on him more because he knows that's where we need to be. I mean, look at what Paul's saying in there. He says, we were under such great pressure. He says, far beyond our ability to endure. He said, we couldn't endure this. We despaired of life itself. He, he said, we thought we received the death sentence, okay? He, just in summary there, he says, we thought we were dead. We thought this was it. We could not endure this. This was not something that we could just handle ourselves. He said, we thought we were dead. And then he gives you the, the reason there. He doesn't just stop there and say, God's just like that. He's just going to make it difficult really hard, you know, and just leave it there. He said, he did this so that we might rely on him and not ourselves. That, that's, the, that's the issues. That, that, that's the problems that we have in our lives. Sometimes when we just rely on ourselves, I know that's every single one of us have to learn that in our lives. I'm telling you, I'm working that in my life. Everybody, every, every day of this on this planet, I think that's what we're trying to learn. We're trying to learn to rely on him above ourselves because when we rely on ourselves, we're, we're going to fail ourselves. There's passages that say the heart is, is deceitful. Don't just go with your emotions. Don't just go with your feelings because it's going to lead you down the wrong path. And so all these things, sometimes God allows this to happen so that we'll drop to our knees and say, I have nothing. I, I can't, there's nowhere I can go. I have no other option. I have to go to you. And he's like, exactly. This is where I want you to be. This is where you need to be. And so that's the point of that. That's what he's trying to say there to us. He will allow some of these things. God will train us to rely, rely on him alone. That's part of this. I've told you guys before, like, when we come in here, <clears throat> rather than just me kind of give some, you know, some words to say and, you know, a little motivational speech or whatever, and then we just kind of leave out of here, I want us to, to approach Scripture looking at this as, as something to teach us, to learn that we can get this down. And then as we come in here, as we talk about being Christians and coming and being the church, I, I hope you have a goal in this. Like, when you, when you come to the church and when, you, when, when you're following Christ, like, you're not just coming in here and, like, you know, like a network system here. I just want to meet some people so I can, in case I need something or whatever. I hope it's more than that. I hope we come in here and it's like, I, I want to learn what I'm supposed to be doing here. If, if you believe in God or even if you're just open to that idea or whatever and you're checking this out, I hope you see this. Like, let's see what the God of all creation actually wants us to do. Like, if, if he spoke everything into existence, let's just acknowledge, like, his power. Let's just acknowledge that he knows everything that's going to happen that will happen. He, he's given us prophecies, you know, and he says it, we've already seen some things that have been fulfilled so that we can say, okay, I trust him. And then when he gives us prophecies that haven't happened yet, we can look back on those and say, okay, I should trust him because this happened. If we see all of that, one who knows everything, then shouldn't we go to this and say, okay, maybe there's some things in here that can just tell me how to live practically, you know? Like, what should I be doing? What is this all about? So I hope he approached the Bible in that way and, and living for God. And that's what it is. He's trying to train us to rely on him alone and follow him because that's the best place that we need to be. So whenever we're faced with these seemingly impossible situations in our life, or, or just, just years like this, are we going to rely on him? What are we going to do? You know, we, we can make the commitment now, reading this, okay, Paul went through this. The guy wanted to die. He thought they were dead. But he learnt, understood what God was doing there. You read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who made the commitment beforehand. You know what? If we get thrown in this furnace to burn, God can save us, but if he doesn't, we're going to be with him no matter what. That's what I'm trying to say. That type of making up your mind, settling it in your mind right now, I'm going to follow him no matter what. That's when you get strength in faith. That, that's when we follow him. That's when we have that faith, and, and, and he's going to allow it to be tested rather than just say, I'm with him, and then we get in those situations, and then we, we falter, you know, we fall down or whatever. He says, I, I, want, I want to make you stronger through this. And there's a purpose in everything that he's doing. He's going to allow us to go through those tough situations. I know it seems counterintuitive until we understand, like, there's a purpose. Like, he, he's got an intentional purpose through everything that he does in our life and even everything that he allows in our life. And, and again, I'm telling you guys, it, it's, it's so meaningful and purposeful and changes everything when you realize that, when you realize, okay, he allows some of these things to happen. I'm not saying everything that's evil out there in the world is like it's just directly caused by him, but I'm saying he can, he can use these things for the better when things happen. 
he can use that to stretch our faith and make us stronger. And when we see that, I'm telling you, it changes everything. It changes how you live. It changes how you see everything. It changes your mood. It changes whether or not you have joy in him or not. I'm not saying there's not going to be some down times and some mourning, okay? But I'm telling you, like, the joy that's just inside of us, it's just there that nobody can take. That changes when we see this, when we see what he's trying to tell us. Let me just look at a few passages here. I'm just going to kind of read these and not even comment on them because I just want you to see the concept of relying on God is just, it's fundamental and just absolutely essential for us here. So look at these. I'll just kind of read them fast, but you can write them down if you want. Proverbs 3, 5. You probably know this one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I just did five. I know six is, you know, goes on even more about that. But he's just telling us, like, trust in him. Don't lean on your own understanding. So he's telling us this. This is important. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It doesn't fear when it comes. It doesn't fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. You see, there's just there's so much depth in what he's talking about in these things that he wants us to understand. Cling to him. Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Some of these verses, it's, it's going to test whether or not you trust him or not, right? Then John 15, 4 through 5 says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So he's, he's telling us what it means to be in that relationship with him and clinging to him and what he does for us. He's not just, he's not uninvolved. He's not up there, you know, apathetic to everything that's happening to us. He's, he's completely involved. He wants life in us. But look at it from from his, his, eye, his vantage point of what he's trying to do and, and, and the things that he allows, and instead of just from our small picture of how everything works, if we would look at it from his perspective, we could see he's doing something through all of this. So then a question, I think, that comes from this, that second one, I said there was two questions that came up, is where's our faith in him? That's really what Jesus was asking. He saw that. He's down there taking a nap, you know, and like, I'm sure that was intentional. Like, I don't know if he's just like, planned it out. I'm going to take a nap here because it's going to freak them out, you know, in this storm and they're going to come and wake me up. Um, and he asked him that. Where's your, where's your faith in all this? I, I mean, I could see it's a storm. It, it, it was wild. It wasn't just something small. It wasn't like a light mist of rain, you know, in, in like a small wave, you know, like a dolphin swam by and they got freaked out. This was a storm that they thought they were going to die. So you, you, can, you can put us in there and you can look at that and say, okay, but Kyle, what about all this stuff? You just mentioned all these things happen in this world. It's, it's the same thing. It's not any different. Jesus is still there. Like, where's our faith? Are, are we trusting him? And that's not, I don't think that's to tear us down, but he's just, it, it's an idea to kind of test us and to see, okay, are you really with me on this? Because you said over here, you're with me no matter what. Are you with me here? This man, uh, I found this quote, and I really like what he's having to say about God allowing us to go through things and, and how it stretches our faith to make us grow. And he said, sometimes when our faith is too weak to trust God, he puts us in a place where our weakness forces us to surrender. Not to trust, but to surrender. Surrender then lays the groundwork for trust because God always shows himself faithful. So, so that's, that's what I was saying about, I, I think it's important to, Man, just dig into this. Get into this more. Talk to each other as a church. Let, let's pray together. Let's get more into this and, and so we can understand these things. Because I, I'm telling you, I, I guarantee you, there's going to be some things that are going to stretch your faith. You're going to think you have this all down, and then there's going to be some things that are just going to kind of rock your world, and you're going to be like, I don't, I'm not quite as solid as I thought on that. And it's that opportunity to like stretch your faith. And are, are you with God or not? Are you going to look into his word and see what he's trying to say? Are you with him? Or, or was it only contingent on him making everything perfect? Did he have to do this, 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 and this for you, and then you're going to follow him? Are you with him no matter what? And he'll do that, and that's what, that's what strengthens our faith in him. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's not hard, but he'll do that to us. He doesn't just slightly nudge us toward him, but, but like he's saying there, he, he forces us to follow him. God will force you to trust him or expose your lack of faith. Now, now I think, you know, you have this, this choice there, what I'm saying is like he's going to put you at this point where you're forced to trust in him. It's like there's no other option. That's what I see in these, these points here either. It makes it really black and white. It kind of draws a line is what I think some of these things 
do for us in our life. It, it, it's difficult. It's a lot easier when you're just kind of there, and, and it's, you just kind of, there's a gray line, you know, you didn't really see, you can kind of go back and forth. But sometimes things happen, and you're, you're, you're put on this, this point right here. He's going to force you to trust in him, or, or he's going to expose that, that lack of faith that you actually have in him, which then we have an option of either turning away, and you're like, this isn't what I signed up for. I didn't think it was going to be this way. Or you can look at that and see, this is, what I, this is what I hope for us, is that we can look at that and see, man, I didn't know that I was lacking in this. And, and then we go to him, we trust, and we ask, God, strengthen my faith. Help me here. Th- there's passages in the Bible, there's people where they were there, and they were like, you know, this guy was, was talking to Jesus about getting, you know, his family member healed, and he's just like, you know, I, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And I love that that passage right there when he was saying that, I love it because it's so, it's so real and it's just, it, I can relate with that in so many ways. He's like, I do believe, but he's admitting, uh, man, I, I, I don't, it's probably a small percentage, but I do believe in you. Help my unbelief. And, and I don't think that's wrong for us to be praying that. Just, just be honest with God. Yeah, I, I do believe in you. You see all this in me anyway. Help me strengthen my faith. Help me to be more bold. Help me to get this because this doesn't make any sense to me, God. I, I don't know why you're doing this, but, but I know you're good. I know you're great. I'm going to trust in you, and he will. He, he's going to strengthen you. He's going he's to test your faith in that way, which is a good thing. It's, it makes you stronger. It makes you where he's wanting you to be. Like I said, there's intentionality in everything that he does. If we see that, it, it pulls us away from this, this side over here where we're just angered. You know, Remember when Jesus talked to uh, many of the, the Pharisees? It, sometimes there were people that were going to get it and people that weren't. You know, And he said the same parable. And, and some of them kind of drew the line down there. And some of them were like, man, this dude's crazy. Like, I, I don't know what, he, what he's talking about. This is wild. This is why I didn't want to come here. You guys are, follow him if you want. That's, that's fine. And then there was another group that were like, I, I don't know what you, what you mean there. There's something about what you're saying. This makes, makes some sense. I, I want to know more. And that's what he's saying. I think he honors that. I think he wants us to dig further. And, and, and he will help you. He's, he's going to show you the way. He's going to help you out. He's going to strengthen your faith, just like what he was saying there. And so all this that we go through is for a purpose, if we trust in him. We can look at it as just seeing a, as a random mess, but I think it's important. Kind of a kindergarten picture. I tried to think of illustrations. And I, I don't know if I had great illustrations, but I was even thinking of like with water. Just get like a big cup of water, and you have like a plethora of just a bunch of little cups around. And, and it's the idea of that being your faith. And sometimes we pour it in all these different cups. We spread it on our faith in these ways. And I, I just picture God saying, no, no, no. Like, I want all of your faith just in me. Don't spread out like a small percentage of this all over the place where you have this shaky, very small faith in all these other little things. And then God may even be one of those small cups where you have like this small percentage of faith, but it's, it's equal to all these other places there. I think he's saying, I want all of it in me. I want you to put it in me. And, and that's, that's a big part of all this testing in, this, in life and what we're doing there. And when we go through struggles and when we go through things is that he's wanting us to learn to rely on him, just like what Paul was saying there. All this was so that we would put our faith in him. Where's your faith in all that? W- one last thing I want to read here from Luke 18, one last passage I want to read here. Luke 18, 1 through 8. And then I want to talk about it. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I'm not going to talk about prayer here, but I just want to see something in this. He said... In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I'll see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And really, the words on that is, is like, some of your translations may say something different. It's like It's literally like, give a black eye. So it's either... It's this idea of she may come and actually hurt him, or maybe it's this idea of like giving a black eye to his, 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 his life, his job, his reputation, different things like that. So he's, he's, he doesn't want this. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for the chosen one, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? There's a little Bible interpretation thing here. There, there's contrasting parables, and there's comparing, comparison uh, parables there. Uh, some of the parables are like, this is how God is, and this is kind of what he does. Kind of compare that. And then there's contrasting parables, which is what this one is. It's like, God's not like this, but I want you to learn something about God. And so that's what you see on this. Is like, you see in other parables where, where it's talking about, 
Even though this person did this, how much more will God do this? Or, or even though your earthly father will do this for his loved ones, how much more will your earthly father do that? That's kind of that idea of a contrasting parable, and, and you see that with this guy. So it's not as if our prayers just like wear down God. He's not saying that. He's, just, he's doing this contrasting parable saying, how much more will God who loves us give us justice? And will he be there? And will he answer? And will he, will he help us to those that he loves? It, I want us to, to understand that about it. I want us to understand through these times, it, just take all these, these pictures about God and it just the, uh, his nature and how he is and his character and, and everything, his attributes. I want us to understand those things so that when we're approached with difficult issues, that we, we don't turn away from him. We remember that he's there and he's, he's always going to be there. He talked about it. You know, even in, I, I've read a lot because I was studying even on our Thursday nights for uh, end times type of prophecy, different things. And I was thinking about this even in Matthew 24. I don't, I don't have this up here on the screen, but in Matthew 24, one of the, the big passages for end times and like when he's going to be coming back. But Jesus said this. He said, because of just in one section there in, in Matthew 24, I think it's 12 and 13, he said, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Again, it's, it's that picture there. What he's, what he's trying to say, I think that just the implication is, it's going to be difficult. You're going to go through these things, okay? But the one who stands firm to the end, you know, will be saved. That's what he's, that's what he's trying to say. He's told us this over and over again, so we're not blindsided with it. He said, this world is, is going to be messed up. Just this temporary world, it's messed up because there's sin, there's brokenness. We know, because we know ourselves, we're, we know that this world is messed up, you know, and it's brokenness. And he said, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And so he's telling us, I want you guys to trust me. I want you to put your faith in me. I want you to follow me through all of this. We're going to stumble, we're going to fall, but get back up and let's continue to follow him. Let's follow his will because he knows what's best. Where's our faith? That's what Jesus was asking so often. That's what you see throughout scripture. Where's our faith in there? Is it in something else? Is it in him alone or is it just partially in him? Does he have a small percentage of it or does he have all of it, you know? Are we working towards trying to give him everything? I think our lives, listen here, I think our lives here are a continual learning, growing process, okay? Like, I, I do not believe there's this, there's this point that you just hit here in the earth, and it's like, you've hit the, the scale. You, you've hit the top point. You can't go any further. Now we'll go to somebody else. Like, we're continually growing more and more. That's what he wants us to understand. You're going to be tempted. You're going to go through things. If we have this wrong perception that, God was going to make all this perfect. I'm telling you, you're going to hit a wall. You're going to get mad. You're going to get frustrated. This isn't going to make any sense to you. If we have this understanding, okay, he's doing something through this. Take the words of Paul, like we were saying. He's like, we went through this. We thought we were going to die, but we understood God was doing this so that we would trust him and not ourselves. It, it helps you. Every time you approach something that's difficult, it helps you understand, that, okay, he's doing something. This. There's intentionality in every single thing that he does. If we go the other way, we're going to miss that that growing process of what he wants to do in this. To accept all things happen so that we might not rely on ourselves. It just, it changes everything. And, and then I love what he says at that in, in, in 1 Corinthians. You remember Paul, he, he talked about this. He did all this so we might not rely on ourselves, but, but rely on him. And, and he talks and he says, you know, he mentions God is the, it's the one who raises the dead. I love just just how he just how he kind of ends that you know just talking about this, this is the one who who uh, who raises the dead you know there in First Corinthians eight through nine but this happens so that we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead and I love it it's just like maybe you think that that's just kind of added in there like you just put it on that's kind of weird they would add it in there but but I don't think it is I, I think it's it's good for us to see that okay because it's not saying I'm not up here saying like just follow me listen to the words that I'm saying I'm another man you know just do what I do or whatever. No, he's not saying follow somebody else. He says so that we might not rely on other people, but rely on God. And just in case you guys forget who this is, it's the one who raises people from the dead. You know, it's like he's the only one who has that title, okay? Just, I just want to make that clear about that. I think that's, that's kind of the point of what he's saying there. It's like this is the one who raises the dead. This is the one who created everything. This is the one who loves us. This is the one who wants to give us life. Put everything and all your trust in him because this is the one who raises the dead. This is the one who's powerful, has everything under control, has all omniscience, all knowledge, everything, okay? All love, everything comes from him. And yet all this is 2020, everything you and I are going through here, hasn't escaped him. 
He's not up there wondering about what's going to happen. He's not winging it as we go. He knows all this stuff's happening. He knows we're in an election year, and it's crazy, and we're all on edge, and, and it's wild, and all these things are happening. He knows these things. He's under control, and he says, I want you guys just to trust me, because if you don't, then you're going to go off on all these paths that, that's going to take you down loneliness and uh, separation from me and confusion and, and sin and all these things. He says, I want the best for you, and so I want you to rely on me with everything. And that's what he's trying to tell us. You guys, here, you go ahead and bow your heads. Let, let, let's pray. Let's talk to God right there with that. <clears throat> I don't know what you're facing. I, I really don't, you know. Maybe we talk with each other, you know, individually. We, we have some, some things we share with each other, but I don't know all the things that everybody here is going through here. Only, only each person in God, you know, you know what's happening there. I, I don't know the struggles you have. I don't know what kind of things are rocking your faith right now. I don't know where you need to grow in that. But, but what I'm telling you is that what I see in Scripture, that, that I believe it with all my heart, is like this, this is from God. He gave us these words, and it can be trusted. I've seen that in my life. I've seen it in so many other people's lives. It can be trusted. He's the one who's there. He's the one who knows everything that is going to happen. He has our best interests in mind. And when we understand all these things that are happening, that he, that he does allow to happen, it's not because he hates us or he's mean or he's just he wants to see terrible things happen to us, it's because he wants us to rely on him more, because he wants us to grow closer to him and be with him rather than anything else. And sometimes it may take those things. And, 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 and if anything, I just pray that even if we don't get all that, that we would just learn to trust him and just put all our faith in him and just know that he's got all this. So I hope that's an encouragement. You guys, bow your heads. Let, let, let's pray. Let's talk to him on that. If, if you need to... Uh, if you do need to come up here and pray, we, we can pray together. If you need to give your life to Christ, you can do that here. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, I made that post, you know, even yesterday or whatever. I just wanted you guys to know there's no superheroes here. There's no perfect people here. It's, it's, oh, we're all broken people. Every single one of us, we need Christ. We could not do it ourselves. He's the only one who can save us, and we need to give our lives to him. If we haven't done that, let's do that. Oh, you, just, you trust in him. You believe in him with, with all your life. You know, you, you know he came into this world that he died on the cross and he rose again and you put your faith in him because he's the one who did it all. He accomplished everything that you and I couldn't do and we put our faith in him and he saves us and then we follow him. Let's pray. Father, I pray for all of us here. If there's anybody here that needs to make a decision to follow you, I pray that they'll do that and, and, and if you can just, just get into their mind right now and their hearts and, and, and maybe make it more understandable the way that I couldn't, God, that they would just see that that you love them and you created them in your image and you want them to come to you, but they have to come to you for that salvation, for life. We have to turn to you, Jesus. We can't do it ourselves, and I pray we would understand that. And then for those of us here who've done that, God, if we're, if we're just kind of stagnant in our faith and we're just kind of staying here, we're not taking any steps, God, help us to take those next steps. Help us not to just sit here and, and, and be trashed by thinking we need to be better, God, but I pray we would just come together as a church, like a real family, and we would push each other in the right way with the intent of bringing people closer to you, God. And all of us, we would do that in love and in, in concern and, and, and just as a family, God. Help us to do what you've called us to do as your church, to follow you, God, and take this stuff seriously, God. And there's a, there's a broken world out there that, that uh, man, their attention has been gotten, God, through all this stuff. And a lot of people are open to hearing about you, God. And I pray that we would be, we would be obedient to taking your message to them, God, just in love and, and, con and concern, and God. And we would think about even our lives. What if somebody didn't come to us, God? And I pray that our hearts would be so broken and we would go to everybody and just take your message to them, God, in love and compassion. We would speak the truth in love, God. Help us to do that. Give us opportunities. Open up doors. God, increase our boldness, God. Increase the church worldwide, our boldness, God, to step out there in you, God. Help us to have more love, God increase our faith so we can follow you, God, and, and trust in you even when stuff starts to happen, God. We need you. We need you, Jesus. I pray we would see that, God, and we would just, just drop to our knees and just worship you and everything. Help us. Help your church be the way that it's supposed to be, God, and follow you. Jesus, thank you so much for going to the cross for us. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing this song to dismiss, or actually we have announcements after this song, but if you would like to come up to the altar, if you need prayer, um, please don't hesitate. There's somebody that would love to pray for you. Let's all rise, and we're going to sing this song.
child.